Hello again and welcome to another installment of the WordPress Client Portal series. Thank you guys so much for clicking on the video. Let's just dive into it today. What do you say? Quick little recap of what we've done so, we've done so far. If you look at the, pl at the playlist or if you go to wpclientportal.co, you can you go directly to the playlist and see all the information. First thing we did was the overview. Second thing, the first part really was the uh, login pages and the page restrictions. So everything, you had to log in order to access the site and see the different things. You're going to want that. Next thing we did was the planning long video about me talking about all the custom post types and the relations and everything like that. Part three is where we're actually going to start diving into creating those custom post types, custom fields, the relations. I'll explain why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. Uh, and then we'll probably even end up start temp to start templating and creating some of the pages today because uh, it's it's going to be a little abstract when we're just creating the custom post types and not really understanding how they're uh, interacting with one another. So that'll probably uh, end up being a part of this uh, piece as well here. So I'm just going to get to work. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm doing. I'm going to give you some different, possibly some different options in certain cases, but ultimately this is how, like I said, as you know, we're rebuilding ours. So let's dive in. So I, what I've done is I've taken it one step further. We had our little, um, our little kind of data architecture map before with the relations and everything in here. So we'll be kind of referencing this, but this is what we're going off of. Uh, that's from the last video mainly. And then this is new. This is what I have just slightly devised as a starting point for the custom post types and fields that we're going to be creating. So each one of these boxes represents a custom uh, custom post type, and then within them is uh, some of the fields that we will be creating. So we'll be, about, we'll be bouncing back and forth, and we'll be talking about this. Quick thing, if you uh, haven't seen all the other videos, what we are going to be using mainly in this video is Jet Engine, Crock Block really, but Jet Engine, the specific plugin, uh, to create these. So if you're not familiar with it, I'll try to give you a super high level. If you're not familiar with custom post types and custom fields, I can give you a high level there, but definitely like just type in on uh, Google or you know YouTube and kind of get, get yourself familiarized with that. But all it is is if you're familiar with posts, it's the same thing, but you just have way more control. You can name it whatever you want. You can add a bunch of different other fields and everything like that. And uh, it's extremely handy and very necessary if you do anything complex whatsoever in uh, WordPress or any CMS really. So what we're going to do is we're jumping in. So if we go to Jet Engine and we go down to uh, post types, we have none currently on this website. The first one that I'm going to do, I feel for me is the most important. I'm going to say websites. And right off the bat, there's a couple different things that you can do. Um, but uh, meaning that like you can name this whatever you want. Again, we talked extensively in the last video, so I don't want to go too deep into it. Why I'm doing websites rather than like companies or something like that. It's because every single project and everything that is in this portal is related to websites in some way like that's the core offer that i have and every service is related to it so every user is going to be related to a website and then every project is going to kind of ultimately tie back to websites so it's kind of the linchpin for all of this when we start actually relating things and displaying things dynamically based on those relations so for post type name i'm saying websites the one thing that you might want to think about again different schools of thought on this and ultimately it doesn't really matter but I'm going to tell you why I'm making this plural and making this plural, meaning having an S on the end. Uh, one, if this, this top thing is going to show, this top post type name is going to show in this sidebar. It's actually going to show up down here in its own very nice little section, which I don't think any other custom post type thing does. Could be wrong, but Jet Engine, you'll see in a second, it's beautiful the way that it displays. Um, but look at posts. Post is plural over here, okay? So that is just I'm saying like from the, that's the standard one. So you should probably make it plural. Some people don't make this plural. Some people, this is the slug now. So it, when you have like your domain name slash uh, website or websites slash, you know, company name, whatever, this is, uh, and you'll see, you'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate this further when we get to it. But my point is that I like having this plural. The reason I like having this plural is because a lot of times, and maybe not on this website, this it will happen on this website too, but even on uh, other websites, uh, more specifically, if you had like services or something like that, if you make this plural, there's that is going to be technically an archive of all of the websites in this sense. You don't, if you make it plural here, you don't have to create another page that that you have to manage and, and handle. You can just use the archive rather than creating a page. If you're, if you're not familiar with some of that, again, we'll go over that when we start creating pages and templates, but I'm just telling you, if you're wondering off the bat why I'm making these plural, that's why I'm making these plural. Okay, we don't really need to worry about any other, other settings here. What we can do here is we can just say website, uh, singular name, and then I'm gonna click tab, and Crocoblock Jet Engine is a great, 
great tool. Just fills all these in for you. Boom. Okay, advanced settings. All those those are just labels, just so you can see. So everything like makes sense, uh, you know, linguistically. I guess I don't know when you're when you're going through everything there, semantically. Okay, is public? That's fine. Exclude. Most of these things are fine. Publicly queryable is probably most likely going to come into play with some of these. All that means is that when you're, it doesn't it doesn't have its own single page. Uh, which if you don't know what that is, again, it's like the link, it's almost like the actual page of that particular post or website or project or whatever it is. We, in this case, I'm going, I'm back and forth on that. We're going to leave it checked for now, but we are probably going to turn it off possibly for other ones and maybe even this one, but the rest of these settings are fine. So we're good, good, good. Everything good here. Hierarchical. We don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, menu position. This is what I'm talking about. You can pick position this wherever you want. Crocker block section is really cool and nice. I like keeping it there. Uh, our little icon here is, I don't know, what do we got? Like a globe maybe? Uh, let's see. Actually, we got to put it here. Is there a globe or like a internet or like, uh, oh wait, yeah, let's just do this. That's fine. That's literally just the icon here on the left-hand side. So that's, that's totally fine for now. Supports, this means like the default WordPress CMS like module things that you would see in the post. So like title, editor, comments, revisions, all these types of things. Normally what I do for this website, I'm not going to use thumbnail or featured image because it's it, it it's not really necessary. Um, I'm trying to think if it matters. I mean, we could use it. We could not use it. It's easier because the difference would be if you use a thumbnail, that is going to be the default, which you could change, but that's the default like sharing image if you ever share it. But in this case, you're never really going to share anything here. So it's it's kind of unnecessary. And it's also annoying because then every time you reference it, it's like the featured image rather than the like the logo. Like we could make we could make a custom field, which we will hear in a second, like say logo. I'm just going to leave it. We're not going to use it. Um, and the other thing is, do we need the editor? So the editor is that Gutenberg, you know, block editor piece that every post has built in that you can you can utilize and, and uh, access data from. Most of the time, I don't do it, but we're getting into the field section, so let's pop back here for a second. This is our initial thought process for websites. We need a logo. That's going to be a, in this case, it's going to be a media field in your in your tool, or it, it could be image, but uh, Gen, uh, Gen Engine calls it media. So domain name is probably going to be just a text field. Uh, there's not really a URL field. I don't believe we'll check again, but I don't think so. The file upload URL is going to be just a text field. The MSA is going to be in a media field because it's an actual document that we would upload and proposal would be a document. So we're not really going to need anything uh, too crazy here at the moment. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's go back to this. So title and editor, I'm going to get rid of the editor because I'm not going to need, I can't think of a reason that we're going to need the editor and it just cleans up the whole UI in the back and it makes it a little more streamlined. So let's just leave title and we'll create all of our other fields. Okay, so let's do that. So now we go down to meta fields. Now, pop back here for a second. We need logo, domain name, file, upload URL, MSA, and proposal. Okay, so the first one is logo. So logo, logo, I just tabbed to there and it automatically did that. And then the this is where you need to pick what kind of field type you want. So there's a, there's a bunch of different options, and in our case, we're going to want media because it's one singular picture that that we're going to put in there, one singular image. Uh, we could say required on some of these. Um, in my in in this use case, <clears throat> I am not going to put required. The reason I'm not going to put required is because. There are, there are circumstances where it may not be actually required. This isn't like a front-end marketing website. It's like if you don't have a, a, a logo yet and we're building a website, I'm not going to like force myself to necessarily put something in there. We could put a fallback, you know, if there's nothing. We, we, that's not 100% necessary. Certain times you definitely want to check that, but not right now. Description is, uh, I'll type this in and it's be like the uh, website's main logo. This is nice just because it shows up there. And if you hand this off to anybody, it's just like a little, almost like a, it's not a tool tip, but it's almost like that. It's just like, hey, this is what should go there. And it, it makes it easier for, for people to um, to do that. What I'm gonna do now, just so we have this saved, is I'm gonna click add post type. And you're gonna see here on the left-hand side that, boom, there we go. So now we have post types, we have websites, uh, all websites, add new websites, you know, the general thing that you would expect if you're dealing with custom post types, uh, if you have in the past. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is, um, We'll just add another field here, and this one's going to be different. So we'll do domain name. 
So domain name and then down here, so boom, we have that now. Uh, we just tab to that. This is gonna be a text because the one thing that always kind of confused me from ACF to uh, Jet Engine is they don't have like an actual URL field, which is kind of good and bad. There may be a way to, I've never done it because I've just, I've just, I've just done it like this. I don't know if there's a way to like validate that it's a URL, like even in a text field, but I'm not seeing that. And it's not the end of the world. It would just be a little bit uh, more, I would say, uh, idiot proof for lack of a better term, because then you could only put in a URL, but just use a text field. It's going to work the same way. And then the description would be like, um, this is where though you should probably put something like this. If you're definitely, if you're handing this off or just if you want to, you know, if you don't want to forget the next time that you come in here and try to do this description should be like the website's um, domain, I can type domain name and it should be like, uh, like you should probably put an example. So like IE, like literally just like company, um, company name.com, like literally just write it like that. Is, is the point that I'm making. Um, you could you could do this differently and say URL, but if I'm saying domain name, I just want it to be displayed just like this is the uh, is the idea there. Okay, uh, cool. And then let's see what else we got here. Should it be required? Again, I'm not gonna require these, but you can if you want because it's, it's totally up to you. All right, so what do we have? File upload URL. What I'm gonna do now, another cool do not delete that. Another cool thing here is domain name. So we're just going to clone this one. Okay, it just saves a couple clicks, right? Because of some of the things we did. We're going to say file upload URL. Now what this is, is that again, might depend on how your business operates and what you want to do. And all I did here was just, you know, delete that. And that's again, perfect. Um, this is going to be a link. Most likely, it would be a link to a shared Google Drive folder that we can ultimately on the front end, put a button or something, and then that button, uh, you know, goes to the Google Drive link so they can upload directly, or uh, it might integrate with, we might be able to integrate it with like WS form or something like that. But ultimately, two things that I wanted to say here again, little gold nuggets. Don't call it Google Drive. I've done that before. Don't call it Google Drive URL, upload URL, because it may change in the future. It may never change, but just keep it generic. Just say file upload URL, because the other thing is, I haven't talked about this yet, but this has happened to me before. If I, if you ever want to change like these, the field IDs, first of all, it's going to screw up a bunch of stuff because things might be related to that and it, it, it would be messy. At least it was in Elementor, so that's rough. But my point is like, try to be as generic as possible with these, because if you ever have to, you, you don't want to have to change any of this shit like this. You want to keep this as simple as possible. I'll give you another quick example. If you have a video link ever anywhere, which we will have, I think in one of these, don't write YouTube URL, just write video URL or something. Um, unless it's very specific and you have to put a YouTube link in there and you're never going to change it to like Vimeo or self-hosted or anything, try to be as generic as possible. That would be my recommendation just because it's easier that way. Okay. So this is, in, but then the description doesn't matter. So you could say like, this is the uh, link to, uh, you know, uh, upload upload files for the project for for this website or something. I don't know. Again, this is just for me, so it's whatever. But I'm just giving you an example. All right, cool. And then we're not gonna make anything required or anything like that. We're just gonna do all that. Okay, and then the next one, let's go back here, MSA and proposal. Okay, so now we have, um, technically it's still media, so we can, we can just copy this. So I'm gonna duplicate that and I'll drag it down here. And the way that I do this generally is I also try to put these in order of not necessarily importance, but uh, almost like most likely, like it's probably, there's probably gonna be a logo. There's pro almost certainly gonna be a domain name. I mean, honestly, domain, you could argue the domain name is even higher, but the way that it kind of shows up, you know, we can adjust from there. File upload URL, you know, it, it doesn't matter. These are on the back end, but it's just, you know, just another, you know, little thing that I do try to, to for organization purposes. Uh, for this, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say master, services is this service or services okay yeah it's master service agreement okay cool all right so let's go like this okay so the reason that i'm doing this and again you might not need this is i want my flow of projects here is lead comes in we talk to the lead we have a synergy session we talk to them we get their requirements we create a proposal the proposal 
is actually going to go probably before this. So we kind of do it in that way. But the proposal is, and let's do it like this. So if we go like this, I'll give you, I'll give it, I'll give it to you right in order here. Okay. Lead comes in, we do a proposal, right? And then um, we'll say proposal. Uh, I kind of want to say like main proposal or like first proposal. I'm just going to say proposal. Just again, keep it, keep it simple. Okay. So what the way that the way that it works for me, lead comes in, we have a synergy session, we get the requirements. Then we say to them, okay, we're going to, you know, it seems like we're a good fit. You know, at least everything kind of lines up for the most part. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a proposal. So we create a big proposal of what we're going to do for them, like just based off of what they want to do. And that's probably going to most likely going to, uh, involve creating a new website, whether that's a redesign or a brand new website. Uh, so all the steps that we talked about in the last video, like the line iteming and everything like that of all the different, uh, steps of our process, then it's going to also involve website management because we like, we, we want to be a digital partner, right? So the proposal is going to incorporate both of those things. It might even co incorporate like ongoing things like SEO or whatever, but the idea is when somebody comes to us, like the first time somebody comes like into this portal, the first time we put a website in this portal and like users and everything, we're probably going to have these things. We're going to have like a logo, domain name, file upload URL. The There's going to be a main proposal. I think The way I think of a proposal 95% of the time is the proposal is the first time you sell somebody on something, especially in our, in, in this, you know, the website industry. It's like, I'm not proposing you necessarily every single time moving forward. And, and one of the reasons is because the proposal that I have has a little bit about the company and like our, our testimonials and things like that in it. And it's very like, hey, nice to meet you. Here's what we can do. You don't have to do that every single, like it, you, there's no reason to necessarily do that when you've already established an ongoing relationship with the client, I feel. Most, the next time you do that, you're just gonna have a conversation. You know, they already know, like, and trust you. You're just convincing them on the the statement of work. That's why moving forward after that, the statements of work are not gonna go in this website. They're gonna be associated, but they're not gonna go in the website custom post type. They're gonna go in like, most likely the project or like the orders. Like that's more, there can be, what I'm saying is, if you have client A, in my mind, they're probably only gonna have ever one proposal. They're gonna have many statements of work though, most likely, because there's gonna be changes, there's gonna be things like that, there's gonna be all sorts of stuff. That's the way my mind processes it. So the reason that I, the reason I'm giving you that, in, that insight there is when I get the client and they come on and everything like that, we're gonna have these little you know, bits of information just to identify their website and show it on the, on the, on the portal here. But the label uh, for this is gonna be proposal, proposal, it's gonna be a media field, and this is like, we'll say like this is the First uh, proposal. This is the main. Um, we'll say main proposal. Uh, we initially uh, gave to the clients, or something like that. Uh, or we'll say gave for this uh, initial proposal we provided for this website. And that's the other thing too is that every proposal is going to be specific to a website, so that's why it's here. Cool. All right. So every website is pretty much going to have like one proposal. It doesn't have to be its own you know, uh, custom post type or anything. We don't need proposals over here necessarily, but that's that's the case there. Uh, cool. All right, so master service agreement. Let's come back down here. And we'll say the uh, MSA for this website is whatever. Okay, you don't need to put description in every one if you don't want to. I'm just doing it. All right. Um, now, now, one thing I want to address is that logo is going to be like an, a PNG, SVG, or something like that. The... Domain name is just going to be a URL in a text field. The file upload URL is going to be a URL in the text field. Um, well, domain name isn't going to be a URL. It's just going to be a domain name. The proposal is going to be a executed, most likely an executed PDF, like a signed PDF. via. We use PandaDoc, so we'll download that and put it in there. That's going to be a PDF that we upload there. And then service agreement is also going to be the same thing, like a like a downloaded PDF, most likely, at least as a minimum viable product here. So that's the that's the concept. Is um, those are the, those are literally the things that we're uploading into these different field types. Cool. All right. So upload post or update post post type there. And now if we go to websites, maybe we should add one just real quick. So add a new website. Okay. We're just gonna do company one is fine for now. Uh, we grabbed some logos from logoipsum.com, I think. Dot com. Just type in logo Ipsum. Uh, really cool download like base uh, um, 
placeholder logos and then we'll say we'll make it we'll keep it simple i have no idea what's at company1.com but uh don't sue me if you own company1.com and then file upload link i mean we're not even going to put anything there necessarily we'll just put like a little a little hash sign there and we'll just say one like hashtag one or something and then um proposal we're going to upload so all i did here too kind of off off uh camera is this is uh, happy files if you're not familiar with that happy files pro and uh, i think the i think sidebar i think there is a new uh, as of recording this in february of 2024 i think the new, next version of wordpress or very soon is going to revamp the whole media library so you may not need this moving forward but uh this is a very cool tool so um you can organize things so i just made like a documents folder and then i got proposals and msas in here um, I just have two standard, you know, like pl template ones right now. So I'm going to choose that for the proposal and then I'm going to choose one for the uh, master service agreement. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to press publish. Okay, so now we have company one as a website. Let's add uh, maybe just one more. So company, oops, company two, we'll go logo. We'll choose a different logo for this one. I think that one's good. We'll say company2.com. And we're just we're not even gonna go to these links. We're just making we're gonna make sure when we do it on the front end that we can see that it has uh, you know different links wherever we're we're utilizing them just in the dynamic data, just as a uh, as an example here. And they'll all have the same uh, you know documents here just because I don't have documents for every single one, but there we go. Okay, cool. So more or less, that is the the end of our uh, websites one. We have one created, fantastic, let's keep rolling. Okay, so we're gonna create another custom post type. Let's go back to our, our diagram here. Also, one other thing that I wanna do, I wanna make sure that I that I do in this, in this video is we did restrict, I was thinking about this as I was off camera, you know, kind of moving some things around there for the media library and everything. We restricted the pages, but that, at least the free version of content control, maybe there's a way that I can play around with it more. The pro here's the problem, and 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 I, I, foresee, I foresaw these problems. You, it's a corner case, like it may never happen to you, but here's the thing. Right now, if you go to the portal, if you're at the stage and you go to your portal, people aren't gonna be able to go to pages because it, the pages are restricted, right? Like you can't go to the dashboard if you're not logged in, that works. The problem is though, there are links on your website that if people did have them, they would have access to them. Meaning that if you go right now to this media library and you click, uh, you know, this image, right? And you, and you, and you say copy, right? And then you go to an incognito window. We're not logged in and you paste this in here. You can see that logo. This is not, this is not definitely not good, okay? Like it's not the end of the world if you're not dealing with like super in, important stuff, like really, but but the idea is this would work for a logo file in the WP content or it would work for like someone's MSA in the, in the thing. So again, if I took this MSA, this could be somebody's specific MSA. So right now we're dumping these into the media library. I don't think there's a better way, but I do think that you have to restrict them, right? You have to at least restrict them to being logged in. But the second part of that, right? Yet minimum minimum viable product, you would have to restrict that so people that aren't logged in couldn't see them. The second part of it though, which we haven't we haven't dove into yet, and honestly, like I, I almost have to test around and make sure uh, it works first, is what if like you have three MSAs here, right? You have company one, two, and three. You don't want company, even if, even if all three of those people are logged in, like they have logins, so they're clients at least, you don't want company two to be able to see company one's master service agreement, right? That's just, you know, that you shouldn't do that. So you have to, there has to be a way to like assign each one of the, of the documents specifically, or, you know, media items or something to those people. Now that may be as simple as creating a relation or some other way of locking it down or whatever, but to be, to be continued on that, we're going to, we're going to take care of that as soon as possible, but not right now because we're building these custom post types, but that is a really important thing. There will be chapters and everything like that in the bottom of the, in the description if you want to jump to that. Uh, but just just something to think about, right? Because you have that, that's a very important step. But let's continue on the uh, on the track that we're on here with the custom post types, uh, just for the time being. So we'll get to that. All right. So we got websites, perfect. Let's talk about projects now. So projects which would have status and then estimated completion date. I feel like is a, is a good thing to put in there. You could even put start date, honestly. 
Um, you could assign the start date because maybe the day that you're putting it in there isn't the actual day that you're you're actually starting it. You know, uh, if you want to go time, you can, but I'm I'm not gonna do time. That's a little little obnoxious for me. Uh, and then a statement of work, which would be a media field. So we're looking at status is gonna be a could be a select. I'm gonna make it a radio. Uh, start date is gonna be I believe just a date field. I think you know, I think that's probably what it's gonna be. Not time, like I said, not date time or time or anything. And then estimated completion date is going to be a date as well. And then the actual, the only other thing is actual completion date. This is I'm going to write this down, but I'm going to, but it's it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Like the completion date could be, it could the completion date really is the day that it goes to complete, right? The status goes to complete, and the. The, the, the way to kind of do that would be, you can do it a couple different ways. You could literally have a completion date field, just like you do there, a date field, which you would have to manually enter the completion date. You could also use like the last modified date for the project, uh, or you could use some other thing where it's like, almost like when you make it uh, complete, when you set it to complete, that is the day that it that the completion date sets itself to. Uh, honestly, I think in the other instance, I just assumed that every time I work on a project, the last modified date ends up being the completion date, and they don't see that until it's completed. So we'll, we'll work we'll work through that. Uh, I know that was a high level. Let's just dive in and uh, and take a look here. So uh, if we go to post types, we're gonna do another one. So projects always always uh, plural, like I said. Come down here. We'll go project. And go through all these. Do, 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 All right, there we go. Come down here to advanced settings. Everything here is, again, pretty good. We're not going to do. You may want, for this one, again, publicly queryable as an example. Um, if you don't want a projects page, like domain slash projects slash whatever, then you may want to turn this off. And in my case, in the... I'm gonna leave it on, and the reason I'm gonna leave it on is because I want to show you guys how to how to like make a projects page if you really want to, because I don't know how in depth you're gonna get. If you had like a website, and then that website has multiple projects, and then you want them to be able to click on the projects because those have tasks associated with them too, I'll show you how to do all that. So let's let's leave uh, let's leave that on for now. Hierarchical is fine. We like this, and then we want to come down here, and I have no idea what to use for projects. Um, maybe a paintbrush. Yeah, sure. Mm, whatever, doesn't matter. We can always change it. All right, so supports. Do we need the editor is always my main question. Um, so here's the thing. You could use the editor, and the reason you could use the editor is because the statement of work is going to be a media field. Like that's going to be a, a document that we're going to upload. But the only other thing that's missing here is like, do you want to write a quick blurb about what the project is as well? Honestly, you're going to have the title already, and they're going to have the statement of work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it out because I don't I don't really see the added benefit, and it's just like extra stuff that you probably don't have to do. When when we show it in the front end, it's going to be so easy to like see what the project is, see the information, and then be able to click on like this to view the statement of work so they could see it all. I don't, and we're not doing SEO or anything like that. So it's not like we need more content. Like it's, you know, it, it, we're not trying to rank on our portal. That doesn't make any sense. We're just trying to make the UI and the UX good. So I don't, I don't think we need that because we're going to have a title. So let's, let's, let's just take the editor out for now. We could always bring it back in and let's keep going here. So, um, so the first, the most, probably the most important thing is status. So you're going to want status and you're going to want, um, uh, this is just going to be a radio field, uh, and we don't want to allow custom necessarily, and we could make this a manual input. The, well, actually, you know what? Here's the thing. Another jet engine gold nugget here is the manual input. When we Okay, so it's a radio, right? And we need to create the options for the radio field. So there's going to be maybe four or five different ones, right? Like, you know, I'll, you know, like completed, not started, waiting, whatever. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you like a maintainability scalability thing. Do you want do you want to have to manually put these in every time you want to do that, or are you, is there a possibility that you're going to use these again? Is there a possibility that you're going to use these five in progress, you know, completed things, all those again? In this specific case, there's a very high likelihood I feel like that our status for projects, like at least our options, like our options for that, are probably going to be similar. Oops, 
as the tasks and the subtasks. So what I would do, instead of having to do this every single time, is I wouldn't use manual, um, bulk manual input, I haven't even used that, that's kind of interesting, but I would probably use a glossary. And the reason I would use a glossary is, let's add, let's add this post type here real quick. And so now it's down here on projects. But um, the reason I would add, I would use a glossary is because I'm gonna show you how to use a glossary real quick. If you go to Jet Engine over here, and you go to glossaries. Now you now you come to glossary, and all glossary is is um, all it is is just it, it's your, your it's kind of like a, a little I don't know I don't want to be semantically incorrect, but it's it's kind of just like a templated set of options that you could use anywhere. Is is in our case is what that is. So we'll just say like um, status options, okay. And then get, and you can and you can get these from. The, there's a lot more power than what we're doing here. This is the this is the baseline, right? So the the thing would be like, okay, so what do we want? Like, we'll say, um, what's the best way to say? It? We, I had not started before, but let's say submitted. And cool, let's say submitted. It's a nicer way to say than not started. You think, right? And then we'll say. Um, and also, there's another thing too. You could say is checked, right, by default. So you probably want that one to be by default, I would say. Um, so yeah. So just just again, fill these in however you feel like. So if you're if you're processing in a project right now, there's submitted. So the project is like submitted or not started or whatever you want to put there. Then there's uh, maybe in progress, I guess. Um, cool. And then maybe um, there would be uh, like in review or being reviewed or something. I don't know. Uh, in review, we'll say. And then the next one would be uh, completed. If I could spell completed. Okay. Oops. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Cool. What the hell happened there? I didn't. I didn't copy it. All right, there we go. All right, completed. Cool. All right, so again, make those whatever you want. I might even change them in the future, but the point is that we have we have some options there, okay, in our glossary. We save the glossary. Now we go back to our post uh, type that we're working on. We refresh because we've got to make sure we get all the accurate uh, data there. And then we come back down to status. And then instead of having to enter them here every single time on these other three post types we have to do, we can just select status options, and it's going to work the way that we want it to. Layout, we're probably going to want to just be like, uh, vertical is fine. That's how we're going to see. You'll see that in a second. When we add some description, uh, this is the current project status. There we go. Whatever. Okay. Um, and again, for required, I mean, for this one, honestly, I would I would say you have to require that. And it's going to be pretty much default, uh, you know, uh, submitted anyway. So you're, you're going to be fine there. All right, so what else do we have here? Let's keep rocking. Start date, estimated completion date. Okay. Let's go start date. Uh, start date. Really can't spell today. Jeez. All right. Start date. Boom. There we go. Field. And we want a date. Awesome. Save as timestamp. Uh, honestly, I almost always check this because I don't know why you wouldn't want to sort or query posts by date. I don't. I always, I pretty much always do that. We're gonna give it up. We're gonna give up on the whole description thing here moving forward because it's unnecessary and required. Now, um, I would, I would say maybe just do this as required, especially because this is gonna, you know, at this point you're like adding projects and you probably want to be a little more uh, tight with the data that you're that you're doing, and um. That's pretty much it. That's all you need for start date, really, because you're just going to put that in there. And then start date, what's our next one? Estimated completion date. So I like I like having this because this could always change. Um, and you can always update this because, you know, stuff changes. So estimated completion date is like you're only going to see this while the project is active, ultimately. Um, not not in the back end, but on the front end, like we'll make it so they so they only see this. So that's going to be a date as well. And I think that's pretty much it. There we go. So do 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 cool. Um, you could also, I will say this as well. 
Um, that might be a nice little addition. Is most of the time though, right? When you're when you're putting a project in, maybe the start date is going to be uh, today, and like the default value could be like a, a string to time, like a, like a like a today type thing. Okay, and the way that you do that is literally you just type in today. Okay, so you just type in today on the uh, on the default value if that's what you want to do. You could also do other things. Just look up string to time function here. And, uh, and you just, but you don't need to write the function. You just write whatever you want to put in the actual function there as the, uh, the input variable or whatever. So today, and that's literally going to automatically make it, uh, today as the default value, which you can obviously change. We'll, ch we'll look at that in a second. Okay, cool. So the next thing is, what else do we have here? We talked about estimated completion date. Um, I mean, you could even set a value there. You could say like two months in advance, but that's, that's a little unnecessary because you're, that's probably going to vary heavily. Start date, there's a good chance maybe that the day you're putting it in is the start date. So that's that's at least something in the right direction. Um, completion date, we're not, like I said, we're not going to do as an actual field right now. We're going to utilize probably the last modified thing. And then let's throw in a uh, statement of work. So our statement of work is going to be very similar to how the other thing was, how the, um, the MSAs and the proposals were. So they're going to be media. Value, da, 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 da. cool, cool, cool. And then I'm not gonna write as required because I mean, I every single one should have it, but um, like I said, maybe it doesn't have it like at the moment or something. Again, totally up to you. All right, so status, start date, estimated completion date, and statement of work. Lovely, cool. Um, that's fine. Yeah, I was gonna reorder them potentially, but that's that's fine. All right, so let's add some. What do you think? All right, if we go to projects, add new projects. And we'll say project one, just make this super simple. Project one, so submitted, a couple things to note here. Submitted is automatically checked just by default because we added that thing in there. Um, here's where those descriptions were, I never actually said that to you. And then start date is automatically set for today, awesome. And then estimated completion date, you should set to whatever you told them, uh, which we'll say like just as next Friday or something. And then statement of work, I don't have a statement of work in here, I will add well, I'll show you real quick how to add a um, subfolder here, create, and then just say uh, statement of work. Te technically, I guess it's statements of work, but whatever. So statement of work there, and then we'll do that. But for the time being, we'll just throw a uh, we'll just throw a proposal in there because again, not really matter. It doesn't really matter. We just need to see something that we're that we're uploading there. Okay, cool. Let's do one more project. And let's do project two. It would be nice if we could automatically duplicate things. I don't know if that's a WordPress thing, what have you. All right, so let's do, let's shake it up a little bit here. Let's do 14th. Let's say, let's say this one's in progress. Let's say, well, actually, let's say that we forgot to add this project and we're like, it started a few days ago and now it's in project, in progress and the estimated completion date is here. And then we'll just throw in this and there we go. So we have two projects now. Awesome, awesome. What's next? Uh, let's go to, let's do tasks. Cool. All right. We're getting fun here. Cause we haven't, we haven't, we haven't done any relations yet. So I think we're going to do, we'll do, um, we'll do tasks and we'll do subtasks and we'll, mm, I mean, I guess, I guess we'll, we'll do all of them and then we'll, and then we'll come back to relations real quick. So let's speed this up here. So if we go back to post types, and we go to add new and we'll say tasks. Now, the reason we have to have tasks is tasks is going to have its own set of stuff. I mean, we could potentially, you know, go in and I don't know, maybe make like a, you can make it rough and, and make it in the project somehow. But I, I think this is kind of going to make more sense because these tasks are going to be associated with those, um, with those projects and, this is just going to be a better. This is going to be a better method than literally like writing like a bullet list in the project or something like that. Or I don't know. So, so for this, this task thing again, I'm going to uncheck publicly queryable because I don't think I'm going to want to go to the task page. I think that's a little excessive. I don't. I don't know why I would why I need that. I'm going to add that early, and you can see that it has. Well, actually, that's actually amazing. It's a little. Uh, it's a little thing. That, that little task pin, um, actually is appropriate to some degree. Okay. We come down here, has archived. Do you want to see all the tasks? Mm, probably not. No. For pro let's let's go back though, because we never we never addressed that specific one in a second. Has archive. 
the archive page is what I was talking about earlier, the slash websites or slash projects or slash tasks. Let's think about this. Do we want a slash tasks page? Not really given our architecture. If you're naming things different or whatever, we do want a slash projects page. We do want a slash websites page. The reason we want those is because we, we want those archives, but it's not an archive of all of them. It's only ever going to be an archive of the current users' websites, current users' projects. You may want that. Like that, that is definitely foreseeable. We could always tweak it later. You're, the user is most likely never going to want to come in and see all the tasks. They're probably going to want to see, I want to see all my websites. Then I want to see all the projects that I have going on, kind of potentially even related to the websites. But once we're down to tasks, it's like, these are tasks that are part of a bigger initiative. And if you're looking for, you know, like if you have like four websites that you're doing for somebody and like they each have like two projects each, you're at eight projects and they all have like a bunch of tasks, you're not gonna wanna see that task page. So I would say probably not publicly queryable and not archive, but they are like an actual, um, they're, they're, a, they're a custom post type and they're gonna be individual posts, but we don't need all that other stuff. Um, okay, cool. So, uh, and honestly, you know what? I am going to... Is there like a list or something? Let's do this as the tasks, I guess. And then, I mean, subtasking, and we're getting kind of ridiculous there, but I want to I want to kind of show you just the, the way to do it. So there's that. And then editor, um, honestly, we're not going to need that because I think the task most likely, well, I mean, I will say like if you go to Google tasks or something, there could be a title and then a little description. I don't want to use the editor for it though, because there's because it's just a task. There's there's way too much there. Let's go back here for a second and let's say tasks due date. So you should definitely have for a task the option to add a due date. That's not going to be required, but you should have that. And then you should have a status of the task, which honestly, honestly, I mean, I don't know how deep you want to get into it. Tasks because the project is more of a. I feel, kind of feel like. This is again a question for you. Like, is do you want tasks to be just on or off in a sense, or do you want them to be? Do you want them to be like the same way where they're like started, in review, pending, whatever? It, I mean, it really. I mean, once you get to subtasks, I mean, if you if you're doing a whole a whole thing for that, that's I don't know, that's a little excessive. But again, just for the sake of this, I'm gonna use that same um, that same glossary that we that we created just so I can show you kind of how that works. But let's update this post type. And then let's slide down here to meta fields. And let's go to uh, the first one we're going to put in is due date. So due date is going to be a date. And save as timestamp, yes. And this is the date that it's due. And it's not necessarily required because if you had a task app, you wouldn't have to you wouldn't have to set a due date. You could just put it in there. You should probably have one, but you don't need to set one. And then the other thing that we need is status. And at minimum, again, we're going to need like an on and off, like a not complete or complete. But in this case, I'm just going to do a radio again. And I'm going to, instead of manual, I could manually input them again, but I'm going to do glossary. And you could even create another glossary in Jet Engine. You don't have to have just one glossary. You could have a ton. Uh, so you could have had like one that's, um, you could have one that has four options. You could have one that has three options and utilize those all different places and everything like that. Uh, should be required though, I would say regardless of if you use multiple options or just the just the two. Okay, cool. And I think we should be good there. Uh, actually, though, I will go one step further because I do think that it is somewhat valuable to have a description here. So like you, you're going to have the title and that's going to be the, you know, the title of the actual task. And then you're going to have a description that uh, is going to be probably just, can we use, Wiz let's, let's use WYSIWYG, cool. All right. And then should it be required? No, because you don't have to have that in most cases, but due date status and subscription and yeah, that's probably fine. Okay, cool. All right. So let's go to tasks. Um, if we go to right here and we click add new, so let's add a task. So task one, and um, due date is, I don't know, I mean, a week from today, I guess. If we want to add that, we don't have to. And then this is what I was talking about. See, we didn't we didn't create this again. This is just here. So it's, it's all the same. And also, 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 if you ever want to change these, you change them in one place. And again, I don't, I don't know, don't quote me, because sometimes changing these types of things can mess up your data, right? Like if you change this from submitted to something else and you have things that are submitted, I... 
I've had issues there where like the data gets lost on the ones that were submitted, but that were that thing. But my point is glossary definitely saves you a lot of time and is definitely more maintainable in that in that way. So uh, we'll say status submitted, cool, and then this task one. Okay, there we go. All right, so publish, and then we'll say task, actually uh, we'll add a new one, leave that, yeah, don't save that, and then task two, and then due date, we won't put one here, we'll say this one's in progress, and we'll say task two description. Okay, cool, so we have tasks now. Let's run through these last two really quick, articles and policies that aren't somewhat inconsequential right now, and then let's, uh, let's start doing some relations, shall we? Let's go back to post types. Add new um, articles and articles and article. You can name this whatever you want, but in my thought process, it was like a knowledge base article, so that's why I did that. We do want these to be publicly queryable. We do want them to have an archive, which is going to be like our help center or something. Um, and we could play around with what that would end up being the actual archive title because like right now it's going to be slash articles but you know i don't know we'll play around with that at some point but for this one we could actually leave the editor if we want um and i actually think in most cases that is probably going to be the best here's the reason why if you look at the gutenberg editor the best part about it is that that editing experience like this just to look at it real quick like this editing experience here where they have like the opportunity for you to come in here and choose blocks and everything like that. This this right here is very good. And if you're thinking about building an actual extensive knowledge base within your portal or any website, then this is probably something you're gonna want because you could type in stuff and then you could and then you could put videos directly in here and pictures and all that sort of shit. And if if you want to do that, that that is probably gonna be a really good bet for you specifically for this for this case here. You may even want um, I mean, if you're doing this publicly, you probably even want like a featured image. Uh, but you know, that's, that's neither here nor there right now, but title and editor, we're going to leave that. Then we're going to add, um, what I like to add, I would like to add it separately is I'm going to add walkthrough video as you saw over on the other thing. And the reason we're going to add walkthrough video is because you could put it directly in there but I like having the option of being able to like edit in the editor and then also have a, a, a standalone field that I could pop the video in rather than having to go into the editor to edit, you know, the look and view of whatever, whatever is going on there. Um, and this is going to be, could be media if you're going to upload it directly, but honestly, I'm going to say, I don't, I don't know if you want to upload them directly here. This would be a really big question for you. I mean, most people say never upload directly, never upload videos directly to WordPress, which I, I mostly agree with. And I'm just trying to think if I was gonna do this, I would honestly probably upload them. I would probably upload them to the media library, but I wouldn't want them to be stored here. I'd want them to be on a, like a CDN, just for safety, whatever, just for safety. Let's do, let's say walkthrough video URL and let's do a text and it's not required or anything like that, but let's just do it the same way that we did for the uh, you know the domain name and the, 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 the file upload URL. We'll just do that and just put it in there, and whether it's on Vimeo, YouTube, whatever, then you can drop it in and you can access it like that rather than doing a media field and having to upload it there. We, we didn't even talk about conditional logic in those, in those and everything. Like you could actually say like, is this video you know, that, that's another option. It's like you could have a field that says, um, is this video, are you uploading this video or is this, are you embedding this video? And then you could say yes or no. And then you could have two fields. It's like walkthrough video URL or walkthrough video um, media or whatever. And then, you know, you can do that. We're not going to do that, but that's an option if you want to do that. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. Articles are done. We're not even going to worry about those right now. They do have a the same thing there though, which I don't like and is gonna annoy me later. So let's let's change this to uh, help. That's good, perfect, great, 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 great. I love semantically labeled uh, icons, that's awesome. Okay, let's, uh, 
go to post types one more one more time here one more time a lot of creation a lot of a lot of movement not a lot of talking a lot of movement here let's go to well talking with the with the clicking and the typing last one is uh, policies probably the easiest and most straightforward of the bunch if you are using termageddon link in the description because termageddon is amazing the team is amazing uh, highly recommend and the way that we do policies is uh, are they publicly queryable? Yeah, because they they're gonna have their own their own page there. I normally have them have an archive page as well. And down here, what do we want to make this like legal? Uh, how about just document for now? I mean, whatever, that's fine. And um, the way that I normally do this is I get rid of the editor. I press t I I use title, so it'll be like title would be like pol privacy policy or terms of use or whatever. And then the label for this is I go embed embed code snippet and if we scroll down this would just be uh, this could be a text area just so you can kind of like see more of it but you don't you don't want any formatting or anything like that you just wanted to grab that so text area and then is required uh, I, I, it technically is I mean you don't want a page without it so I'm uh, let's say required and then what this does is if we go to add post type We'll get to the whole policies thing but if we're adding a policy then we're going to say we're not even going to fully do it but we'd say privacy policy whatever and then down here we just embed our code snippet and then we're able to use that on the actual privacy policy page and uh, just generate it because that's how termageddon works you put in a code snippet and then you and then it generates the uh, policy directly for you based off of the updates and everything like that that you've made uh, on their platform so yeah love that cool awesome all right, so let's get out of all this. Nope, we don't need that. We don't need that. Let's go back to and see what our next step is. So we have all these created. Terrific. Look at all these post types. That's amazing, right? So what do we want to do next? I think the next thing we need to do is start establishing some of the relations because that is going to be paramount in everything that we're doing here. So in order to do that, we need to go to Jet Engine and we need to go to Relations. Now we have no relations just yet, and we're going to need to go back here to kind of take a look at the way that we need to do this. So the first thing is users users and websites. Now, the way that I've always done this is the way that I've always thought about this with parent and child relations. If we go in here to the relations list and we go to add new, the way that I've always thought about this is relating two different custom post types or, you know, users obviously as well in there. And again, the websites to me is the main object or the main custom post type that we are dealing with basically throughout here. Users, yes, but you, but users doesn't relate directly to everything. We're using websites as the main thing. Again, like maybe as you would company or whatever else. But in my case, websites has always been the main thing. There is a, you know, for lack of a better term, like the domain name or the title of that website object is always the thing that is like relating to users, relating to projects, driving all of those relations, just at least the way that it worked, again, in the previous build and everything like that. So what I'm going to do is the first one I'm going to create is I'm going to say websites, and this is just a name up here, but we went to Jet Engine Relations, you know, in the, in the sidebar there, and we said, I'm going to say websites, um, and you could say two, I guess you could also do like a little a little colon, I think, but I'm just going to write the word two, whatever, and then websites to users, and then from this drop down, we're going to find websites, now that we have them all created, and we're going to create, and we're going to say, that's the parent object, and then we're going to say um, child object as the, all the way at the bottom, users. Okay. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. So websites to users. Now, what kind of relationship to this is in my mind, it's always many to many because users to websites, many users can have many websites, many websites can have many users. Simple as that. Okay. So then if we come down to parent relation, we don't need any of that right now uh, because um, we're just, we're just literally relating these two here. And then all of these other things are allow to create new children from parent. We don't really need, I don't believe any of this stuff right now. And then down here at the bottom with labels, you're probably going to want to change some of these because it starts to get kind of like a little confusing um, when you're when you're looking at these on the on the the the, uh, the back end when you're changing stuff. But ultimately, that's we'll, we'll change that in a second. So if we add this relation, let's just see if you're completely new to relations, I want you to understand what just happened. Nothing happened on the front, on, right there on that screen. So now though, when we go to websites, okay? If we look at, this is a draft that I was 
doing there. Let's get that out of there. And then if we go to company one, so this is the stuff we had. Like we're very like this is this is the normal stuff. This is what we saw. Well, wait a minute. What's at the bottom here now? Well, we have children users. And again, like I said, that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like it, it doesn't. It, you can change that to like associated users or like users of this website or whatever. Um, so that is that is what we want to do there though. Is we're cr- like if we go back to our thought process, we're gonna create the website at some point, right? Like the website uh, for company one. So we're gonna create that website custom post here. Then we're gonna come down and we're gonna say, all right, well, which user is associated with this website? And we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna pick one, all right? We'll pick client, whatever, I don't know, I don't care. It doesn't matter. So now client, this, this login, this person, okay, is associated with this website. Now it's not gonna matter right now, because it's just all in the back end, but we need to build all of those connections, those relations, because when we go to the front end, we need to have something to compare to and and check that like, okay, this person is logged in. They are associated with this website, possibly other ones. We only show them the stuff that they're associated with. You know, it's actually that simple, you know, when you when you talk it out. So that's pretty much what we're doing there. All right, so let's go back to websites then. And just for the fun, we will go down to company two, and we will say support. So now we have client and we have support. Terrific. All right, great. Now, um, and the other thing that I will potentially do here is I will add my user, my logged in user to both of them. What that's going to do is that on my, the the confusing part about this, um, when you start, when you set this up and everything, and you do this is that you are going to see one way of data when you're logged in as an admin. But then if you use user switching or whatever, which we'll get to and we can kind of play around with, is you you are gonna be, you're gonna see all of the data if you're associated with all of them or if you, if you set it up that way. But then if you're not associated with all of them, you're only gonna see, you know, you use a user switching thing to see all the other ones, then you'll you know only see those ones. So we'll just do that for now and we can come back and play with this. But the point is that we have a, a relationship now between websites and users, which is like one of the fundamental pieces that we have on this. So it's a many, many relationship there, cool. All right, what's the next one? Well, let's do websites to projects. And again, there's a couple things here. One, every time there's a relation, there's only three options. And we will go back in here and I will show you what I mean. When you're creating a relation and you go to relation and you click add new, so we have the one there now, there is an option, this option down here, one to one, one to many or many to many. If you need to have one, like if one of them needs to have one and one of them needs to have many, then you all, then it seems like you always put that one as the parent object, right? Because there's not, there's not an option that says many to one right? So in, in our case, let's go back for a second. In our case, we need to have websites and projects. Well, what's our thing here? One to many, and it's websites, one website to many projects, because in my mind, in my system, is website, one website can have many projects, certainly, but can one website, or I'm sorry, one website can have many projects, but can one project have many websites? I would say no because I think you want all of your projects to be unique. There wouldn't be a set, there wouldn't be a time where even if let's say let's actually do a real thing. Let's say we have a we have a project and you want to create you have to create a website for company 1 and company 2. The website creation project is not going to be exactly the same for both of them. I mean, if it is in your business, okay, but and and, and adjust accordingly. But in my business, no project is ever exactly the same. It's gonna have different subdata. It's gonna have all this other stuff. So we don't want it to be like that. So one to many on the websites to projects is definitely the way to go. Let's do that one now. Websites to projects. Cool. Websites. And I'm just typing in the words here. Projects. This one's a little tougher because there's too many things that start with a P. Okay. Projects. There we go. All right. And then we said one to many. Terrific. And there's still not really a parent relationship here per se maybe websites to users let's adjust that later because we're not there yet cool okay and then the rest of this again labels and everything like that we're not worrying about that right now i just want to make sure that you understand kind of where we're at with the, with the relations and everything let's now go back to our uh projects and we're relating again projects to websites. So project one, we're gonna keep it all the same, right? So project one is gonna get all the ones, project one with website one, make it real simple, or company one, right, in a sense. Um, so we'll say company one. And the reason I said company one is because I kind of actually got a little confused there. I should have actually said 
website one in a sense because it was website one. It wasn't company. I mean, ultimately, it's this is why it's so weird. But the reason is because normally it's one website to one company, but it's not always. So I'm actually going to go ahead and fix this right now because uh, this is going to this is going to annoy me as it just did. So I apologize about that. I'm going to change these to website. Both of these two, uh, website one and website two, because I think that that is obviously more more uh, appropriate. And I was just thinking as the company name. It's probably going to be the company name, but you know, don't you don't have to necessarily worry. The other, well, the other actually, honestly, the other way to do that would be to say the title. Just put the domain name in as the title. That would be another way to do it. The trouble is, like, that's not <clears throat> that's not exactly how most people would think about it. They would see a website and they would see the domain name, but they might say the company name. So there's there's different ways to do that, but at the time being, we'll just we'll just leave it as such. Regardless though, let's go back to our project now that we started and you can see how it said company one. Let's refresh this and I will show you again <clears throat> the beauty of this is now it says website one because it's a relation and it's not like, it's all dynamic. It's all pulling and associated. It's not just thrown in there somehow as like plain text or something like that. That is, if you're new to dynamic data, that's that's the stuff right there, okay? So if we do that and we go to project two now, we will associate website two with project two. Perfect. We have our projects related to our, we have our websites related to our users. We have our websites related to our projects. What do we have to do next? Let's take a look around the thing here. All right, we need to go to projects to tasks. So again, in my mind, one project can have many tasks, but many tasks cannot be related to many projects. Like it, again, I feel like every task itself as a line item is unique. So let's, let's do that one real quick. So if we get out of this, we get out of this and we go to projects or actually rather we go to relations and we say, and in this case, we don't have websites anymore. So what are we, what are we doing here? Well, we're doing projects to tasks. And in this case, if we go projects and we go tasks, in this case, we definitely, like I said, want one to many, right? So one project to many tasks. But here's the thing. We have a relation that's websites to projects, right? And then we have a relation that's projects to tasks. So in my mind, this is a relation. What? But this project, this projects to, to tasks here, right? This, this little section, right? This looks like a relation. Forget about these other things relation. But wait a minute, is this is this right here the parent relation? It's a terrible terrible little square here, sorry. But is this website and projects? Okay. Is this website and projects a parent relation? I I do believe it is. I do believe it is. So the the way that this the way that I process this in my mind is if for some reason you were on like the website's page for for, you know, like the website single and you wanted to reference the tasks associated with a specific project that was from that website, that would give you the option to, to, to reference those because now you're creating, again, more of a ladder there, more of like a, almost like a three rung ladder. Not gonna make sense right now, but we're gonna keep that as such. If we need to change it, we will. But in the past, that is kind of the way that, that my mind, again, works with, with this and, and you're able to, to uh, kind of do some cool stuff there. Our last one is subtasks in this main in this main chain here. Obviously, other than uh, orders and everything, which which we'll get to. Subtasks. Now, here's the thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. We created that subtask post type, and then I'm thinking, and I did some research off camera, and I'm thinking, hmm, do we need subtasks? Do we need it in two ways? One, do you even need subtasks in general? But two, do you need subtasks of tasks? You already have projects, then you have tasks of the projects. We're getting a little deep here, like I said. Here's the thing though, I actually think there may be a way where we don't have a separate custom post type for subtasks because subtasks are really just tasks. There's definitely a difference between projects and tasks, but subtasks and tasks, semantically different in the name of them and like where they, you know, if they would indent or be associated. But I actually think that there's probably a better way to do this. And I think the better way to do this is to have just tasks and think of it like, you have a hundred tasks on your list, but there's only 10 main tasks 
And then all of those other 90 tasks are associated with like more of a parent task. Let's try to create a relation. But instead of creating a relation between tasks and subtasks, we're going to create a relation with tasks and tasks. So tasks to tasks, but really they're subtasks. So if we go tasks and tasks, cool. All right. Now, what did we say? One to many, right? So one task can be many. And then honestly, projects to tasks would be our, our parent relation. And let's add this. Cool. So now if we go, if we get rid of all this stuff, let's get rid of all this stuff for a second. And we go to a task now. And we go to task one. And at the bottom here, we say children tasks and parent tasks. See, now this is very interesting. It's a little confusing on the back end here. But the idea would be that you have parent tasks and you have children tasks. And those are, it's like, this is a task, right? Is it, does it have children or does it have a parent? And depending on if it has a ch child or if it has a parent, that tells you if it's a subtask or not. If it doesn't have any, then it's a ta it's a regular task. If it has a child, then it's 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 like the main task and it has subtask. If it's a if it's a if it has a parent, then it's a subtask. I think this is actually the way to go. I actually literally just just thought of this. All right, I'm feeling really good about this, and I think we're done with the relations. At this point, I think it's best for us to stop here for this video, and you guys can go ahead and create your own custom post types and your uh, fields and relations and all that sort of stuff. We will be coming back to this throughout the series because we need to definitely might need to make some tweaks here and there, but this is uh, a good stopping point, I feel like, because now we planned our architecture, we have our architecture in place, and in the next video, we will start to do some of the templating and everything like that. I want to try to keep these videos like at a reasonable length, and honestly, once we start getting into that on the front end, it's going to be kind of crazy. So there is uh, what I would say is a, a good minimum viable product for all of the uh, data architecture side of things. Next video, we will be talking about templating and page structure and all that sort of stuff. Uh, more of the front end type of thing and starting to actually really see some of these things come to life. Um, and in addition to that, we got to work on the restriction of the different documents and media and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I'm really happy with where we're at. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, supporting with uh, all your views and your questions, and everything like that. If you have other future requests, comments, questions, leave them in the comments down below. But other than that, thank you so much as always. And I will talk to you in the next video.